Have a word in your shell like? Certainly do will me old chum. Strictly between us, mind you, in confidence. It shall go no further, me old doggy chop. It's about Ermintrude. Doesn't she get on your nerves? What, old Ermie? Shh, I don't want anyone to hear this, but have you noticed she's always eating? Perhaps she's lonely, said Brian. I can't stand all that mindless munching. She looks like a barrage balloon on stilts, said Dougal. A barrage balloon on stilts? Dougal, Brian, shh, here comes Florence. Hello there, has anyone seen Ermintrude? It's hard to miss her usually, isn't it? <laughs> I haven't seen her for ages, said Florence. Might give the garden a chance to grow again. <laughs> Dougal just called her a barrage balloon on stilts. Telltale, said Dougal. You ought not to talk behind her back, you know, Dougal. Which bit of her would you like me to talk behind? You're usually rude straight to her face, said Brian. Yes, you are, Dougal, said Florence. Well, she's such a great fat mouldy milk carton. Dougal, I'm sure you don't really mean that, do you, said Florence. <laughs> Apparently, I don't mean it, said Dougal. What, that Ermintrude is a great fat mouldy milk carton? said Brian. Yes, said Dougal. Mouldy milk carton? What's it matter what I say? She can't hear me anyway. I still think you should apologise, said Florence. Yes, apologise to us, said Brian. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Not sorry enough, said Brian. Oh, everybody hates me, said Ermintrude. They think I'm a great big mouldy barrage balloon. Hey, said Dylan, that's just not true, man. Yes, it is. Come over here. Listen to this. Okay. All I said was that she was a great lumbering oil tanker, said Dougal. All you said, said Florence, take it back. No. See what I mean, said Ermintrude. Yeah, but like, you never hear anything you want to hear when you overhear it. You just gotta like, be what you are, and people will like you even if what you are is like, weird. Weird? Oil tanker? Me? Dylan, do you think I'm weird? Oh, yeah, really weird. Oh. Hmm? Oh, Hermintrude seems to be very upset. I better pick some flowers for her. I'm a weird oil tanker on milk cartons and nobody likes me. And now even the leaves are laughing at me. Oh. I like uh, picked her this tree as well. She'll like that, said Dylan. Oh, someone brought me some flowers. Mmm, comfort food. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Dylan. Hey, don't mention it. That's what friends are for, right? Mm. It just doesn't matter what people say. How dare you, Dougal? I am not a glowworm. I am a snail. Same thing, isn't it? said Dougal. No, it's not. Oh, dear. No, now, boys, no bickering, said Ermintrude. Sticks and stones may break my bones, but words will never hurt me. So there. <coughs> Uh, Florence, excuse me. Hmm? I, um, yes, Dougal? I've got something to tell you. Have you, Dougal? Yes, I'm going away. Uh, good. Anywhere nice? 
I'm going on a long journey and I may never come back. Need something to read? Something to read? Oh, something to read? Give me strength. I am going on a dangerous mission and you want me to read a fairy story? I am going on a scientific expedition to boldly go where no dog has gone before and I'm going alone, perhaps never to return. You off then, said Florence. Yes, I'm off. Well, bye. Bye? Just bye? Is that all? I oh, suppose I shouldn't expect anything else from this lot. Hello there, Dougal, said Mr. McHenry. I just came to say goodbye, said Dougal, for what it's worth, if you're interested. I just can't seem to get these flowers to grow properly. I don't know what's the matter with them. Oh, by the way, if you go past the garden centre, could you get me a bag of fertiliser? Fertiliser? Where I'm going? <laughs> goodbye, world! <laughs> Hey, I just had this weird dream that Dougal, like, went up in a spaceship. I better take it easy. Hello, dog in space, calling Earth, calling Earth. Are you receiving me? Are you receiving me? Hello, Dylan. Have you seen Dougal? said Florence. No, but I'm, like, getting these weird messages from him, like, loud and clear. Where is he? said Florence. He's like in my brain, said Dylan. Oh, one small step for me, but a very big step for a Jack Russell. <laughs> Better make my mark on this cosmic sand pit. There. Now, what shall I do? I know. Panic. No, no, must stay cool, cool and scientific. I'll take a little moonwalk. Yes, that's what I'll do. Hmm. Yes, very lunar. <laughs> Definitely smells funny. I wonder what it's made of. Cheese? Fertilizer? <laughs> I know. I'll do some scientific experiments. Yes, I'll transmit some messages and I'll collect some soil. There. Not that anyone on Earth will believe that I was here. Now, where shall I dig? Hmm. Here? Oh, I'll have that analysed in no time. Oh, where is he? said Florence. I'm worried about him. Hey, like here he is, said Dougal. Dougal? Hello, earthlings. Take me to your gardener. <laughs> Where have you been? asked Florence. Oh, I just popped up to the moon for a bit. You know how it is. Really? said Florence. Tell me, was it made of cheese? No, it wasn't actually, said Dougal. It was made of fertiliser. Just as well, they've run out at the garden centre. It was time for the Eurovision Song Contest again, and Zebedee had got everyone together for a rehearsal. Is everyone ready? he asked. Ready. 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 As we'll ever be. Ready. OK, let's really give them something to think about, said Zebedee. A one, two, three, four. I'm really enjoying this, said Dougal. Uh, sorry, 
Ermintree, can we stop a minute? said Ermintrude. I can't help thinking we should be doing something more original. Yes, I agree, said Brian. A ballad, maybe, said Ermintrude, or something about love. No, said Zebedee, we're doing this. Ladies and gentlemen, please. Oh, I'm so sorry, said Ermintrude, but the lid fell on my hooves. Mr. Rusty had invented a new way of cleaning chimneys, and he was up on the roof trying it out when Zebedee arrived. Hello, Mr. R. What brings you up here? said Zebedee. I've invented a new way of cleaning chimneys, said Mr. Rusty. It's this sort of prickly ball on a string, only I've dropped it. Fear not, said Zebedee gallantly. I shall rescue it for you. And he did. There we are. Oh! said Mr. Rusty, laughing. Your face! <laughs> if only you could see it! <laughs> and what, pray, is so funny about my face? said Zebedee. I don't think I need to clean my chimney now. You've just done it for me, said Mr. Rusty. I see. So have you really invented a wonderful new way of cleaning chimneys? Oh yes, it's called getting other people to do it for you, actually. <laughs> Sorry, Zebedee. How shall we get down? Oh, what's that, Dougal? said Florence. This is the latest thing in chimney cleaning technology from Rusty Tools Incorporated, said Dougal. It looks a bit dangerous and old-fashioned to me, said Florence. It's to remind you of merry old England, said Dougal, and the days when you could buy fourpence worth of barley sugar and still have change from a threepenny bit. I suppose those were the days, were they, Dougal, said Florence. Oh, yes, those were the days, said Dougal. You weren't afraid of getting a bit of good honest dirt on your face. <laughs> now, all we've got to do is find some street urchin, some small person who'd be only too glad to try it out. <laughs> hmm. Um diddle um diddle um diddle I um diddle um diddle um diddle I Hello Dougal, said Brian. Ah, Brian, come this way, said Dougal. We're going to try out Mr. Rusty's new chimney cleaning invention. Can we borrow your ladder, said Florence. Why, certainly, said Mr. McHenry. Thank you. Uh, there, ready, Brian? I'm not going up there, said Brian. Why not, said Dougal. Well, someone's got to try it out, said Florence. Not me. Don't look at me, said Dougal. Well, who then, said Florence. What about you? Oh, me? Well, I, I would, but, um... It might be a bit dirty up there, said Florence. Oh, come on, everybody. Brian, you'll do it, won't you? Well, yes, I would, but I'm um, not very good with heights, and uh, I think I'd be more useful helping from over here, said Brian. Oh, I'll do it, said Mr. McHenry. Oh. Well done, Mr. McHenry, said Florence. So long as no one gets in the way and pretends they're helping by saying things like, how are you getting on, Mr. McHenry? How are you getting on, Mr. McHenry? said Brian. Right, that's it, said Mr. McHenry. I think I might just accidentally drop this thing. Oops. Oh, oh, where am I? Oh, oh, somebody switched off the lights. Have we got any candles? Florence, Florence, where am I? Oh dear, said Florence. How are you getting on, Mr. McHenry? Oh, oh, whoa, oh. Oh, Dougal, said Florence. Hmm, glad to see you're all mucking in, said Zebedee. Oh, hello, Mr. McHenry. Oh, you've got soot all over your face, said Florence. And you look like a licorice all sort, said Mr. McHenry. Hello, Florence. I see you haven't quite mastered my new invention yet. Have you got any washing up liquid? asked Florence. Yes. Bath and then bed, said Zebedee. <coughs> Zebedee, hello. Hello. Been to the dentist recently? 
Yes, quite recently, said Florence. Got any fillings? One or two. Why? said Florence. Because a certain person in the garden today might be rather jealous of you. Coming to have a look? All right, said Florence. Huh. Where is everybody? said Florence. You've got to do something to get that mad cow to shut up, said Dougal. What's the matter with her? said Florence. She won't stop moaning about her toothache, said Dougal. But Ermintrude's got perfect teeth, said Florence. I know that. She never eats sugar. She never even needs to go to the dentist. Hmm, that means she never gets a special treat for being so brave either. Perhaps that's the problem, said Florence. Pathetic, said Dougal. Oh, oh, said Ermintrude. What a fake, said Dougal. We'll have to make her realise how lucky she is to have strong teeth, said Florence. Oh! What's the matter, Ermintrude? asked Florence. I've got oofake. Oh dear, oofake? No, the oofake. She's got a pain in one of her eef. Yes, that's right. Well, we'll have to do something about that then, won't we? said Florence. I think the, um, medicine is on its way, said Doodle. Here we are, cold lumpy gravy, said Brian. It's horrible. Yes, this should make you feel much better, Ermintrude, said Florence. Blew, it tastes horrible. Any better now? No. Oh dear, I don't think I can take much more of this miserable old moose, said Dougal. What did you say? said Florence. I said, um, <clears throat> I think one of her teeth is loose. We'll have to take it out. <laughs> take it out? Do you think that's a good idea? said Florence. Could be painful, said Dougal. Could be very painful, said Brian. We'll have to use the latest dental equipment. Or a rusty old bit of wire, said Brian. Uh, Dylan, could we borrow one of your, um, uh, um, could we borrow your, uh, oh, what's the use? <sighs> Got it, said Dougal. Yes, but it's not really long enough, though, said Brian. Not long enough? Long enough for what? said Ermintrude. Yes, we'll need something really long if we're all going to pull, said Florence, carefully unravelling one of Penelope's webs. There we are. Now, said Dougal, everyone heave when I give the word. Um, excuse me, said Ermintrude. In your positions, team, and ready, steady, heave. Oh! And again, pull. Oh, it tickles a little bit. Ermintrude, said Florence, your tooth seems to be perfectly all right. Oh, oh really? said Ermintrude, a little bit disappointed. There's only one thing for it, said Dougal. We'll have to tie the string to this door and then slam it. And if that doesn't work, it's no food for a week. Actually, my teeth are feeling much better, thank you. Can I have my treat now for being brave? Oh, yes, that was a good one. The old magic lamp trick. Oh, oh, oh dear, oh dear. Hello, Mr. Rusty, said Florence. Hello, Florence. Just having a look at the old magic book. Want to have a look? Oh, thank you. We had some fun in those days, said Mr. Rusty. I didn't know you did magic, Mr. Rusty. Oh, yes. All sorts, said Mr. Rusty. Really? Can we do some now, said Florence. Well, with Zebedee. And it was a long time ago, said Mr. Rusty. I'll call him, said Florence. Hello, said Zebedee. I was just showing Florence the old spell book, Zebedee. Remember the magic lamp trick? How could I forget, said Zebedee, turning the pages. Oh, can we do it now, said Florence. Oh, no, you wouldn't want to meet Bernie the magic lamp, 
He once turned the whole audience into a vegetable patch. To see the magic burner burn, say bazoin three times and turn. Oh, don't say that word, said Mr. Rusty. Which word? You mean magic? No, bazoin. Oops, I said it. Oh, don't say bazoin three times. OK. Hello, Zebedee. Pleased to see me. Not particularly, Bernie, said Zebedee. <laughs> Oops, pardon. Now, what was that spell to make the blue lamp disappear? Hello, Rusty. Got any good jokes? To make the blue lamp disappear, just whisper. Oh, what was it? All right, Zebedee, I can take a hint. <laughs> Phew, that lamp is a liability. Well, he's gone now, said Florence. Yes, but we haven't seen the last of him, I'm afraid, said Zebedee. A lamp? You conjured up a lamp with a magic word? A likely story. <laughs> what was the word, anyway? Bazoing, said Florence. Bazoing, said Dougal. Shh, said Florence. You said bazoing three times and a lamp appeared? That's right, said Florence. Well, quite frankly, I'll believe it when I see it. Oh! I say, I say, I say. I thank you, burp. Beg pardon. Oh, 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 well, burp. Well done, that man. Uh, I won't take my hat off. I'm not stopping. Hey, 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 hey. Why did the chicken cross the road? Because he saw the zebra crossing. Oh, 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 oh. Burp. It tells jokes, said Dougal. Well, sort of, said Florence. I think I'll do a bit of magic now. Make you laugh. Oh, 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 oh. No, no, you like this. You really will. Now, what's your favourite fruit? Go on, go on. Name a fruit. Name a fruit. Any fruit. A banana, said Dougal. An apple, said Florence. Eeny, beeny, macaraca. Oh, 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 oh. You are what you eat. Oh, I love that one. Hey, hey. Want to be a sunflower? And an elephant? You're an elephant, Dougal, said Florence. Turn me back at once, you, you... Sorry, you've been a lovely audience, but I must go now. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. Up to your old tricks again, Bernie, said Zebedee. Well, I've remembered the spell. To make the blue lamp disappear, say buzz off loudly in its ear. Buzz off! <laughs> Former shapes now restore back to what you were before. Oops. Former shapes, now restore back to what you were before. Phew! Oh dear, said Florence. Oh, who am I? said Dougal. Help! Will sugar still taste sweet? Yes, I must be me. I think I'd like some too, said Florence. Well, you know now not to mess around with magic and never to repeat the word bazoing ever again, said Zebedee. Do you want some sugar, Zebedee? asked Florence. I don't mind if I do, said Zebedee. Oh dear, said Dougal, I think I've forgotten what it is I'm not supposed to say. Well, I think we should just leave it like that then, don't you, said Zebedee. Time for bed. <laughs>